Barely two weeks after literally being wheeled out of office in our third story in the countdown, Dick Cheney is back trying to justify his tenure in a 90-minute talk with Politico. And despite repeatedly indicating that he did not want to criticize the new president, Mr. Cheney spent a good part of the interview doing precisely that, deriding the stimulus, labeling the possibility of Mideast peace unlikely, and saying of Obama's emphasis on diplomacy, quote, I think there are some who probably actually believe that if we just go talk nice to these folks, everything's going to be okay. A direct repetition of the Republican attack line during the campaign, despite the fact that no one on the campaign or in the administration has ever advocated just talking nice to anyone. Then after repeating the already debunked statistic that 61 former inmates at Guantanamo have returned to terrorism, he proceeded to bash Obama's plan to close the facility. Quote, if, we, if you release the hardcore al-Qaeda terrorists that are held at Guantanamo, I think they go back into the business of trying to kill more Americans and mount further mass casualty attacks. If you turn them loose and they go kill more Americans, who's responsible for that? Actually, Dick, you are. If anyone has started killing Americans after leaving Gitmo, it's because you and Mr. Bush let them out. And how about all the infringements, illegal and otherwise, Cheney and his cronies inflicted on the American Constitution? If it hadn't been for what we did with respect to a um, terrorist surveillance program or uh, enhanced interrogation techniques for high-value detainees and the Patriot Act and so forth, that we would have been attacked again. And that uh, those policies we put in place, in my opinion, were absolutely crucial to uh, getting us through the last seven plus years without another major casualty attack on the U.S. In his opinion, except that there's been no proof, no evidence that any of those things truly prevented another attack. So why would Cheney bring them up to essentially threaten the new president into keeping illegal wiretapping and torture? There's a challenge there for the Obama administration of uh, whether or not they um, take the time to understand what we did and why we did it and how we did it uh, before they run off and start taking down programs that I think are essential to the security of the nation. We're joined now by MSNBC political analyst Lawrence O'Donnell. Lawrence, uh, thanks for your time tonight. Good to be with you, David. First off, am I hearing things? Did the former vice president just say the new president, by undoing some of Bush's programs, is putting America in danger? Is that not an outrageous charge? It's beyond outrageous, David. We are left at this stage with no good choice about Vice President Cheney. He is either a pathological liar or he is completely unhinged. His friends, uh, people who have known him a long time, uh, prefer the unhinged description. They will tell you that the man they knew before 9-11 is not the man they recognize now. Uh, I'd like to direct the audience and, and you, David, to one more thing that uh, Dick Cheney said about President Obama and the Obama administration. He said, quote, that they are, quote, people who are more concerned about reading the, the rights to an al-Qaeda terrorist than they are with protecting the United States. More concerned with reading rights to an al-Qaeda terrorist than protecting the United States. You see in the vice president there is a, a, a pattern where when he is cornered, when he is feeling most defensive, that's when he tells his worst and most outrageous lies. There is no one in that administration who is more concerned with ha giving Miranda warnings to al-Qaeda, who, by the way, don't get Miranda warnings under anybody's plan, uh, than protecting the United States. Uh, you see this when uh, Tim Russert uh, uh, cornered him on Meet the Press about why we're going into Iraq, and uh, Cheney said, we will be greeted as liberators. He said that on the basis of absolutely nothing. Made it up when cornered, invented, uh, lied, in that case before the fact, uh, in this case, lying to the American public about who just got elected president and who is working for him. And never mind the lies and never mind possibly being unhinged, isn't there some kind of rule, some kind of etiquette to stop the former administration from bashing the new guys when you're two weeks in? I mean, after all, President Bush has kept quiet so far. 
You will not find uh, disparaging comments uh, from Al Gore uh, or even any comment from Al Gore about the Bush administration for the first year. You won't find something from Hubert Humphrey uh, attacking uh, Richard Nixon in his first year. And, and, you know, Gore and Humphrey and Walter Mondale are former vice presidents who actually lost, were defeated in their race for the presidency. They were not provoked uh, to say anything like this. And, and, and at no time have they have any one of them ever said anything like this uh, questioning the fundamental ability uh, of uh, the Obama administration to protect the United States no former vice president has ever questioned the ability of the current administration to protect the United States this is something that uh, for which unprecedented is a mild word Cheney hit all the old Republican talking points Democrats are dangerous on national security Obama's naive on diplomacy closing Guantanamo puts America in danger regardless of Dick Cheney's sort of perhaps being unhinged or whatever is motivating him are these talking points of taste of what to expect in 2010 or have these talking points simply lost their ability to literally frighten the electorate you know, I, I think the Obama administration would welcome them as uh, the strategy recycled uh, for the next election since they failed so miserably uh, this time around. And look, in 2004, this was the technique. This was the vice president in 2004 who said, if you elect the Democrat, if you elect John Kerry, we will be hit again. He, he uttered the most vile statement of that campaign. And let's remember, they won in a very, very close race. That, that was almost a rejected strategy in 2004. Uh, you know, you flipped 60,000 votes in Ohio and John Kerry would have been president. That election wasn't decided till the next morning. So it's not as if it was an overwhelmingly successful technique then. It certainly was repudiated uh, in 2008. And so uh, if, if uh, Republicans want to keep trying it, uh, I'm not sure Democrats shouldn't just welcome it. Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC and the Huffington Post. Lawrence, thanks as always. Thanks, David. Rod Blagojevich won't go quietly into the night either. After giving late night comedians tons of material, Blago decides to go straight from the frying pan into the fire. And Congress hears today that the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme should not have surprised the government. A whistleblower says the SEC had plenty of evidence of wrongdoing, but look the other way. Details in Still Bushed. And when Rachel Maddow joins you at the top of the hour, he tried to abolish the department among other sins. So why on earth pick John Gregg for Commerce Secretary? That's all I had. This is Countdown on MSNBC. At a time when American businesses are hurting, why should we worry about fixing health care? Because quality, affordable health care can save money and make businesses more competitive. So they can invest in innovation, hire back workers, create jobs, get the economy working again for everyone. Quality, affordable health care. It's not just something we should do for America's families. It's something we must do for America's economy. Capturing the wind and putting it to good use. Wind energy from GE. Some of the cleanest renewable energy on Earth. You see a son who doesn't get his kicks from algebra. Sylvan sees a learning plan to make his goals. You see a daughter who'd rather rock than write an essay. Sylvan sees a way to improve her study skills. Call 1-888-87-EDUCATE. Sylvan creates a personalized learning plan to build lasting skills, habits, and attitudes for success today and tomorrow. Get started at Sylvan for as little as $95. In 36 hours of instruction, your child will improve one grade level guaranteed. At their basic price, the phone company gives you unlimited calls locally. At $24.99, Vonage gives you unlimited calls nationally. All of Canada and Puerto Rico, plus free calls to five countries in Europe, and pennies a minute around the globe, including Mexico. Connect Vonage to your existing high-speed internet, and you've got dial tone. Get more of the world, just $24.99 a month. Sign up at 877-4-VONAGE or vonage.com.
Ron Blagojevich is more than ready for his close-up, Mr. DeMille. We all saw how David Letterman eviscerated Senator John McCain. How did Blago fare on the late night last night? And in still Bush correcting the wrongs of the Department of Justice and what's wrong with the SEC. A whistleblower says it was warned about Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, but wait until you hear the alleged reasons why nothing was done. You're watching Countdown on MSNBC. The new CVS.com from CVS Pharmacy is the easiest, most convenient way to manage your prescriptions. Just log on to CVS.